Hello. Today's lesson is about the difference between global and local variables. So I've already written some code and I've stored it here under the run button. I double click on it and you can see that procedure, the button run click, produces this. So this is the code and those are the variables which exist in button run. Now these are local variables. They've been declared inside this procedure. They do not exist outside this procedure. Now we can test that. Well, firstly, we can check whether they run perfectly inside the procedure by merely running the program. And if nothing happens or nothing bad happens, then this works. So this is exactly what the program is supposed to do. So these variables, I and num, definitely exist inside the button run procedure. However, there is another procedure, the other button. Let's double click on that. It has no code yet, but if another procedure like this one could have access to those variables, then if I put a, co a line of code like that one and I copy and I paste it into this procedure, now this line does refer to I and to num. If procedure button another click can access those variables, then it should run perfectly. If it can't, however, we should get some form of error. So let's run it and see, and immediately I get this undeclared identify error. It does not know, Delphi doesn't know what I is, and it doesn't know what num is. An undeclared identifier. So, we've established that local variables are the ones that are declared inside a procedure or a function. We'll get to functions a bit later, but local variables are these declared inside the tummy of a procedure or a function. And they don't exist outside. So, in this case, I have a different procedure. Button another click, and let's declare variables with the same name, i and num, as integer. And now my program should compile at least, because i has been declared and num has been declared, although it hasn't been initialized. In other words, these values, i and num, don't have values at the moment. So let's run our program and firstly just click on button run, and you can see that it runs normally. And now if I click on another, it should print something times something equals whatever. And look what happens. 438492 times whatever that is that. So why does this happen? This happens because the two variables, i and num, are not at all the same. Even though they have the same names, they're not at all the same as the variables in procedure button run click. These merely have the same name but they refer to different positions in memory. So different positions in RAM. Because they've been declared again, well, not again, but they've been declared in a different procedure. So hopefully this highlights some of the properties of local variables. Even if they have the same name as variables in other procedures, they are not referring to the same memory positions. And because these variables in the button another click procedure have not been initialized, but it has been allocated to a position in RAM, what is displayed here is merely the value that happens to be stored in that position in RAM. And that's why we get these strange numbers. So, now we've spoken about local variables, but what about global variables? Right up at the top of your code, underneath type, which has private, public, and end, and uh, underneath it, as subheadings, we have the heading called var, and this is where we declare global variables. So I'm going to declare one of these two variables a global. Let's make that num. num colon integer. Now I'm going to remove num from the local variable declaration, as well as from button another click. So let's remove num from there. So now, what's the implication of a global variable? It is not declared inside a procedure. It's declared right at the top in the heading section of my program. Now, num can be accessed through any procedure or function down below. So let's run this program and see if it works. So if I click on button run, this will declare i and initialize num. So now if I click on another, it will declare i again but it won't declare num, it will use num because it is a global variable. So suddenly I see that i is a strange number. 
but none is still five because it got its value from the first procedure, from the button run procedure. So this brings us to the point of when to use global variables and when to use local variables. It is good practice to use local variables as far as possible. It keeps your code succinct, in other words, all together, and prevents other procedures from fiddling with your code in, uh, in one procedure without your specific intention. Global va variables, however, do have their place. And if I do want to use a procedure or a function to change a variable so that its values can be seen or changed in other procedures, then global is definitely the way to go. In the next few videos, we will be using global and local variables. What remains is to talk about global variables and how do I initialize them. Now, I suppose I can take any of the procedures or functions and give it a first value or give num or the global variable a first value. But that means num will not be initialized unless that procedure or function is actually executed. So there is a neat little way of initializing global variables right at the beginning just as your program starts running. So in the object inspector down here, choose the form and then go to the events tab over here. And on the events tab, there is an on activate section. So if I double click here, I will be able to write code which will be executed the moment the program or the form is activated. And that is a good spot to initialize global variables. So let's double click there. And now it has created the outline for this procedure. My global variable is num. And I can say right at the beginning, num colon equals zero, just so that it has a value. 